I've seen quite a lot of videos out there from the point of view of being a tester but not so much from the point of view of designers that need the help of testers. So I've decided to create that for you. I also feel like this is because I'm gonna be saying tester so much that maybe you should take a shot every time or like maybe every time I say it, you get to buy a new ball of yarn or something. Anyways. Welcome to HD Designs Crochet, HDDC, the champion of the granny square and nurturer of the new and aspiring crochet designer. I'm Heather, the designer of granny square patterns for my tribe and mentor providing resources for those young creatives just like you creating income streams from their passion. I went from corporate lawyer being told what to do to full-time self-employed crochet designer doing what pleases my soul and I want all creatives to have the same freedom to have financial stability, opportunities, independence, to have power of choice, to choose how and when you work. Join me on my mission to change the world one crochet pattern at a time. Hey tribe, welcome to HDDC, HD Design to Crochet. I'm Heather and this is my channel all about the granny square and all about the crochet designer. Today's vlog is about testing. So testing is where your pattern is sent to people who are called testers and they literally make the pattern to test it for you. So they make your pattern before it's sold and they check that it makes sense, that the instructions work, nothing's missing and that at the end of it, what is in the pattern they can actually make. I've seen quite a lot of videos out there from the point of view of being a tester, but not so much from the point of view of designers that need the help of testers. So there isn't many vlogs or much in even blogs or anything out there about um, where to find testers, how to manage them, um, what to set as rewards and all the different things within the process. So I've decided to create that for you. When I put my first pattern out, I knew that it needed to be tested and I had done some testing myself. So I had a little bit of experience from the other way but I didn't really know like where to find people, um, how to set expectations, how to manage the process. So like it was just a lot. Um, so I would have found these sorts of vlogs really, really useful. So I'm hoping that you find them useful as well. So if you are a new designer and you're a little bit stumped as to where to find testers, I'm gonna cover that today. So specifically in today's vlog, I'm going to cover where to find testers and I've got three main places that I find testers and then there's like a bonus one at the end. If you are a new designer, then you might just be feeling a little bit stumped, like you have this pattern, how do you find testers? Um, or maybe you want to put a pattern out there, but you're sort of not sure on the next step, so you haven't quite got started. So hopefully this will like light the way a little bit for you. Now, if you've had any experience being a tester, then you will know the ways that you tend to sign up to be one. So that will give you a little inkling. The first main way to find testers is to post about it in groups. There are dedicated groups on Ravelry and on Facebook and loads of other places that are full of people that want to be testers. These people join these groups so that when a designer or a company posts to say that they have a test, then they can sign up and lots and lots of people out there absolutely love to test and i mean it is so much fun and i'm going to do an entire vlog as well if you'd like me to on rewards that you can offer to testers because there's some definite perks of being a tester there are tons and tons of groups on ravelry 
um, that are full of lots of people. I think one of them that I found had like 25,000 people in there. And each group has its own rules. So bear that in mind. When you join the group, it will say what you are allowed to post, exactly what information you should include and like how you should conduct yourself within those groups. And then there'll be rules as well for anyone that signs up as a tester. Um, you, There's so many different ones, like there's one specific for crochet, specific for knitting, Tunisian crochet. But then not only that, there are also groups that designers have created themselves. So I know Sari Knits has her own Ravelry group um, and she posts like in there so that people can sign up to be testers. Um, if Ravelry and accessibility is an issue, there are also other places such as Facebook. I've actually used a Facebook group before to find testers because I was struggling to fill some slots. And I found some really decent people. I'm pretty sure it was for Promise that I did that with. Um, because there's not that as many crocheters out there. And it's Granny Square as well. So um, it's like a specific type of person will want to make that pattern. Um, so I just posted it in loads of different places. And that's one of the places I actually found some really good testers. And again there's different rules and there's different standards you can expect um, most testers take them like take the signups really really seriously but i wouldn't necessarily say like testers on ravelry or facebook differ or are better in any way like a tester is a tester and most of them really will step up for you i just haven't really used the ravelry ones because i have never been a big user of ravelry um I just find it a little bit clunky to use, whereas I'm used to Facebook and I know how to post in groups. So do what works for you. As a little side note, it might be beneficial for you to set up your own group as well, whether that's on Ravelry or Facebook, so that going forward in the future, if people say to you, where can I sign up? That's somewhere that you can signpost them to. It's somewhere that you can post within. Um, it just means that like you've got a captive audience and that everything is all in one place um so maybe after you've done one or two or maybe from the get-go you just set up a group i mean don't be put off if you only have like 10 people in there because first of all you probably only need like five to ten people to test anyway and second of all nobody's group starts off with a billion people in it it grows so you might have 10 people now and then four patterns down the line you might have 40 and 10 patterns down the line there might be a thousand people so start it as soon as you feel comfortable now the second place for you to find testers is social media and this might be more widely used than groups in my experience i use social media more than i do groups but i know that will differ for each person so quite simply all i do is i post on my platform of choice which is usually instagram and i will put up testers needed tester shout out and um usually an image of the pattern that's being tested I will then share like the yardage and um, details of the deadline, details of the reward and how to sign up. So it might simply be comment below or DM me um, or it might be sign up on a form, whatever it is. And so sometimes I've even seen people do this, like designers do it where they've posted saying they need testers and that you have to go and sign up to their group. So like figure out a flow that works for you um, within all of these options that I'm giving you. So for me personally, I will post onto HGDC that I require a tester. I'll put the post together and I'll also share it in my stories. Um, quite usually other people within my tribe or other designers will also share to their stories as well, which really helps give it a signal boost so that it reaches more people. Um, and then what I choose to do is before I had people DM me, but my DMs are wild. I've got like 7,000 people on Instagram. And if you get like 50 people apply, 
um, then that's 50 different DMs, but there's not a way to search and filter. So it just became difficult to then keep on top and not lose people. So I found that it's far more effective for me to set up a Google form. It's basically like a survey and I get everyone to click the link, which I leave in my bio or I put in my stories as well. And it's just like name, what's your social media account? Have you tested before? What's your experience level? Just basic information that I need. What size would you like to test? And then I will do the shout out and then maybe like 24 or 48 hours later, I'll go through, I'll like export all the data into a spreadsheet. And that's what's really, really useful about the Google Forms is it's all in one place. So then I can export it all into a spreadsheet and then go through and check. So um, I have like my own requirements of what I want to see in a tester. So I'll go through, make sure that all that's met and then go on to the next stage of the testing. Um, I also have a sign up box on my website as well, which sends you through to a similar form. So whatever way you want, whether you say to people, here's my post and you can DM me, comment below, fill out a form, go join my group, whatever it is, that's a way to find testers. Um, and on your post, make sure you use the hashtags as well. So there's quite a few relevant hashtags such as um crochet testers testers like crochet testers needed crochet testers wanted um and same for knitting and quite a few people that enjoy quite a few people that enjoy testing will follow those hashtags so that it will come up so even though they're not following you it will appear on either their explore or on their um main feed on their homepage with an Instagram so that they can then um, click on it and follow whatever prompts that you've put on there. I personally find social media really effective because it's so easy to reach so many people so, so quickly. Um, if you feel that like you're not getting the reach on your post, then you can just ask other people to share it. If you um, know any other designers or even just like other accounts, they don't need to have lots and lots of followers. Um, because if the odds are, if another crochet account shares it and they have like 500 people, but you only need five testers, then you're going to fill those spots. Um, and then with the hashtags as well, it will go much, much further. So yeah, that's really, really handy. Now the other place that you can find testers is a website called Yarn Pond. Now Yarn Pond is a dedicated website specifically for testing. So crochet designers, knitting designers, tech editors and testers can sign up. And there's like different structures and different fees. And I'm gonna show you bits of that on the screen now and put links below. I haven't actually personally used Yarn Pond, but it is something that I want to use because it looks like an absolutely great resource. And what I really like about it is there are rules for the testers and for the designers. So sometimes you might find that you, people will sign up to be a tester, but then they might ghost. And ghosting is basically like they disappear and it happens like i've been a tester and done that um i've not been able to commit although i've signed up i can't like fulfill my obligation um and it, it happens like it's part of life but it then can mean that you might have a size that's completely untested and so like there's different rules and things in place to stop people um signing up for too many tests and like over committing themselves and things like that which certainly would help um, and they've got loads of like different features on there that you can use. So although I haven't used it myself, I do really, really want to try it. And if you have tried it, then please comment below and let us know how you found it, whether you've tried that as a test or whether you've tried that in a different um, capacity. That would be great to know. So there's loads of different features on there. There is some costs associated to it, but... Um, 
that doesn't put me off it might put other people off depending on where you are in your stage of designing and um, but i'd quite happily pay to get testers that really are committed and really really want to um make my designs because having a really good bunch of testers makes a huge huge difference to your pattern overall not only in terms of um the finished pattern so you'll get really good feedback on the formatting and the tutorials within it and pointers and you'll find people with different experience levels will have different feedback as well but also the better photos that your testers take the um easier it is for people to see your pattern so if you have 10 testers and eight of them take amazing photos then that really really helps your pattern because one it's basically like leaving a review for your pattern two it really helps to see your design your pattern on different figures so i model all of my own patterns and i put in my details of like my size information somebody that has a wildly different figure to me will want to see it on somebody that represents them so that they can like decide whether it's a pattern that they're gonna want to wear whether it works for them does it work for their wardrobe and like what modifications might they want to make so if somebody else makes it that has a body figure type that suits the suits that is similar to theirs then they'll be able to see that and think i like the way they've done that i like that they've lengthened it i like that they've cropped it i like that they've added this that the other i'm going to do that modification as well and it's really really useful it also means that you can share those images with your testers permission you must always get their permission you can share those images and create like really cool reels and um i've seen that lily kate did one where all of her testers they um like walked on and then like turned around and then walked out again something like that but they all did it so it meant that the transition every time like somebody turned or whatever it swapped to another person and it was just really cute and it's a really really good way of showcasing your designs and the more like um material you have in that way the easier it is for you to promote your patterns um and the more you can promote them then the more sales you are likely to get because the more people it reaches so your testers really really do make a big difference which is why i wouldn't be opposed to paying fees and whatnot on yarn pond to make sure that i get testers that really really help um because ultimately it means that the pattern goes further and that's what I want to happen. Now, as a bonus, um, another way that you can find testers is to create your own email list. And this is really useful in for quite a few reasons, for a number of reasons. Um, first of all, if you have your own email list of people that either are interested in your patterns or want to test, it means that if you have a secret test, something that you don't want the public to see, you can send out a snapshot of information and have people reply to you. Um, it also means that it's very easy to reach people because it isn't dependent on them accessing social media or a third party platform. You're emailing it, it'll be directly into their inbox so they're more likely to pick it up. Um, and it just means that then you have a little bit more control because if for, for example instagram's down and that's the only way that you get your testers then you'll be like sort of scrambling to try and find more but if you always email people there should always be a way to get that email to them um so that would definitely be like one of my top tips is to start your own email list so collect the email addresses of the people that sign up or with their permission so that you can email them in the future. It might be that they're all in your group as well and you might just send out an email to say, I've updated um, the testing group, please go and have a look if you want to sign up to be a tester because spots are limited. It might be that you email people and say, "There's um, I've posted this on Instagram, but my, test, my email list gets first 
dibs like there's so many different ways that you can make it work for you but having an email list was really really helpful and then in terms of the order that i use them it's like in reverse of what i've just told you so i will email my list then the next port of call for me is going to be yarn pond and um, because i really want to try that out and in effect i feel like that encapsulates what social media and um the groups do because you have an audience of people that specifically want to test but for whatever reason if i don't find what i want on um yarn pond then i will go and do the groups and the social media i think alongside using yarn pond i will still post to my instagram as well anyway because it's a way to let people know that i have an email list it's a way to let people know that there's a pattern coming um so it's always really really useful to post on there anyway and then if i don't find what i need within those resources i will then go to the groups um one thing i will say is it doesn't hurt to put to post in many many places and then let people know how you want them to um sign up so it might be that you post in all these different places and then you leave the link for the form and then maybe you get like 500 sign ups or maybe you get five sign ups whatever it is and then you choose from your google survey form and that also means you can extract the email addresses and continue the cycle as long as you have a way of managing the information that comes in that's like the main thing after that you don't want to like lose people's details or get confused and it also is useful to post to different places because some of the sizes are harder to fill so i never struggle to fill any of the sizes from extra small up to like 2xl to extra large but the 3xl 4xl 5xl i don't always get tested for those um and i mean what I make is pretty niche, so it's crochet and there's more knitters out there. It's usually granny square and the like the bigger your figure is, the more granny squares that you're gonna have to make. So like that could definitely put people off. Um and maybe there's just not as many people within those size categories. I just don't know, but for whatever reason, it can be harder to fill those slots. So it definitely helps to post in as many places as possible. So that's like my top three places for you to find um, testers and also there's a couple of bonuses in there for you of how to create your own list as well and a little bit on the management. I have put all of that information and more in my launch workbook. So I've written a series of workbooks for the HGDC hub and that is like the central area for new and aspiring crochet designers to go to and um within this workbook i've got everything from rising up your pattern picking the price details to um writing your about me section because that can feel really difficult finding testers managing your testers like putting them in a group dealing with it all the rewards all your tech editing, promoting and launching your pattern so that you are a crochet designer. All of that is within the launch workbook. It's only £20. It's a really minimal investment for such a huge, huge amount of information. So if you found today's vlog really useful, so if you found this vlog really useful, without a doubt, that workbook is going to help you because it's absolutely crammed full of all the information that I've like amassed. It's got my processes on how I make testing work for me. And it's got like things just to make your life so much easier and quicker and just get you started and get your patterns out there. So I'll link that below for you as well in case you want to take a look. Um, and then I'm gonna do some more vlogs as well on testing. So if you've got any questions about testing, whether it's as a tester or running a test then drop them below so maybe you want to know like um what rewards to offer or how to m like manage the test over the six weeks that it's running 
or how to keep on top of the feedback that you're being given, whatever it is, drop it below and then I can make another vlog for you. Um, I am aiming to put out one to two of these informative vlogs per month for you. So drop your questions below and then I can cover those for you. And also I have had some of the questions on Instagram. So I made a reel. I actually was asked, um, somebody commented and said, I've done my pattern, but now I need to find testers. So then that sparked a reel and that's why I then expanded it here as a vlog to give a little bit more information than what you can do in like a 30 second reel and caption. Um, so yeah, ask away and I will do my very, very best to answer for you. And if you do run your own tests or you're about to run your own test, then which method are you more likely to use first, whether it be um, the groups, social media, yarn pond, or maybe setting up your own list? Let me know. I'm intrigued as to which one is the most popular. I think it might be social media because it's just so simple and easy. So let me know below and I'll see you in the next vlog.